Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Halftime number 25, someone's keeping count. Welcome back to our studios in New York, Singular at the Half, Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg. The Kentucky Wildcats counting. are now showing uh, signs of being the same team that they were that won the uh, SEC tournament. Uh, they finished the season off in fine style. Greg, they're deep, they're aggressive, their zone defense has really disrupted Iowa, and then they've got Tayshawn Prince who can bail them out when they need to have a play made at the offensive end. This is a very, very strong team that's playing extremely well. All right, Clark, I have introduced you 25 times. That's significant. <laughs> In San Diego, St. Joe's and Stanford are just getting underway in the second half. Stanford with a 10-point lead on the Hawks. Let's take you out there now. Second round action in the West and join Dick Enberg and Bill Wall. Joseph's. Second half underway here in San Diego with a top-seeded Stanford Cardinal leading by 10. And St. Joe's with the ball deflected out of bounds off Stanford. O'Connor. He's starting to make his presence felt. Good drive that time, following up the successful foray to the hoop. He struggled to get his eight points early. O'Connor from three-point range, not there, and Jaron Collins with the rebound. Surprisingly, the first half, St. Joseph's outshot Stanford, barely 52% to 51-7. Jacobson from long range, and out it comes to oh, Nelson. Great pass to O'Connor, and O'Connor with the easy two. Stanford better watch out. O'Connor's coming to life. This is a guy who's really great. 18 points in one minute of action this year. That's how good Marvin O'Connor is. Now, how did he get those 18? He, he, he scored 18 points in the last minute of the game. And Dez. Trickles off, but there's a follow by Jacobson all alone on the back side for the rebound, and he has 17 points to lead all scores. O'Connor has to play the complete game here. He just can't run out each and every time. Casey Jacobson is too strong on the glass. Nelson around McDonald and the body on McDonald and that'll be the fourth foul against the point guard of Stanford. Major difficulties for Mike Montgomery. Transition opportunities. What Martelli wants. The chaotic wide open full court game. And then a big man shooting a jumper from one side and the off guard coming in and stick back. That won't get it done for St. Joe's and Michael McDonald is critically important point guard for Mike Montgomery to the bench saddled with four. Julius Barnes replaces him. Barnes now on Nelson. Phillips with Jaron Collins. O'Connor and Jacobson. That's been an interesting matchup. And then Thick three seconds. gets up a shot and scores. Oh, O'Connor's only 6'4", the junior from Philadelphia. Does he work for his he, points? He's not 6'4". Put him up next to Teo Johnson, who they list at what? 6'5"? What they list Teo Johnson? 6'7". Oh, good. Marvin O'Connor is not 6'4". Mendez inside to Jaron Collins. Picked off by Nelson, and there goes O'Connor again. Don't let that ball bounce. A big mistake. Goes through some hands, and no basket. The foul is before Reed could get up the shot. Nelson comes by and he says no problem uh, to O'Connor. Uh, Mike Montgomery starting to get a little tight there as the uh, momentum swinging here. This uh, offensive flow can continue for St. Joe's. Number one to see that Stanford could be in trouble here. Something they haven't been in for a long while. They're second in the country in margin of victory per game. And over 18 seconds for the two Blue Devils at over 20. Oh, look at that. Nelson <laughs> weave his way through, and now Phillips passes up the three. Oh, Reed. Inside to Reed, working on Jason Collins. Gets it back, goes up, and he's fouled. Flailing away, Damian Reed making it all happen, getting a trip to the line. So Stanford with a 49-41 lead, and we've said this about a couple of other games so far tonight, Clark. Just when you think someone has it in hand, here come the other guys. Well, because St. Joe's has the active backcourt, O'Connor and Nelson, and they also have guys up front that can bang with the Collins fellas for Stanford, you've always got a chance to get back in the game. And St. Joe's is yet to get on fire from behind the three-point line. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, in Uniondale earlier this evening, second-round action, Southern Cal defeated Boston College by a score of 74-71 in the, the strangest, weirdest ending of a game today. Give a listen. 
and now they need a three. 7.5, here comes the Big East Co-Player of the Year. Harley, down the lane, the runner, no, Bell, and and that's it! USC pulls off the upset! Let's take a look at this again now. Penetration by Harley without much time on the clock. I think he's got to be thinking about kicking it out to the three, and he had guys available. Kenny Walls, Eric Sing Singletary was there. Let's hear what the players and Coach Skinner said about it. I was like, what's he doing, you know? I mean, they're down three, and he's going to the uh, hole for two. Coming down on that on that last play, uh, Coach Skinner said, um, I mean, take a look, but also, I mean, go to the basket. How, the way they, it was playing the three-point line, I guess, kind of gave me an initial reaction to get into the basket. I mean, hopefully getting a layup and forcing the clock to stop or maybe getting fouled and one. So that's what I, I thought I, I mean, tried to do. I mean, let's not get carried away with one play. And the, the, the philosophy of what my team is that if there's time left on the clock, we can always take the ball. If we're down three, we all, I'd rather get a good shot than a bad shot. So if a good shot means taking the ball to the basket and the clock shots, then that, that still means we have time to play. So that's, that's, what, we, that's, that's what we teach, that's what, and that's the way we play the game. If he made the play to kick it out to someone, then that's fine. If he didn't make the play, then that's fine. There's nothing out of the ordinary that happened as far as I'm concerned. That's the way we play the game. Clark, I admire Al Skinner for standing up for his team, but the fact is a bad three-point shot would have been a better idea than a good two-point shot because he was out of time and out when of options. When you look at the circumstances, seven seconds ago, you don't call a timeout, which I agree with. Go ahead and run it up the floor, but if you do that, you've got to be thinking three, and the penetration was there, as we saw with the Telestrator. I think it was a bad decision on um, Kenny Harley's part. I agree. All right, let's take a look at what's on tap for tomorrow. We'll be on the air at noon Eastern time, and then send everyone off to the tip at 10 after 12, the Midwest action between number five Syracuse and number for Kansas. Then the second wave of games features Indiana State, Gonzaga, Butler in the second seed in the Midwest, Arizona, Temple in number three seed, Florida in the south, and the top seed in the Midwest, Illinois, taking on Charlotte. And then we'll wrap things up with Fresno State and top seed Michigan State in the south, Notre Dame against Ole Miss, Penn State against number two seed North Carolina in the south. We thank you for watching Singular at the half. We'll send you back to Sioux Uniondale for the second half of Iowa and Kentucky after this. Singular at the Half has been sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Now to St. Joe's and Stanford in San Diego, 56-49, 12 and a half to play. Dick Enberg and Bill Wolf. St. Joe's has pulled within four, down by 14 earlier. The Hawks are flying. The men from Philadelphia challenging the number one seed, Stanford. It's a four-point game. Marvin O'Connor, the fearless shooter from Simon Gratz High School in Philadelphia, set up by his buddy, the freshman Jameer Nelson. St. Joe's eighth in the country in Assist per game, way up there. It made threes per game. It's all happening as O'Connor and Jameer Nelson have come alive here. One of the seven Jesuit schools, St. Joe's, representing here in this NCAA tournament field. The Joe Vacchini now replacing Julius Barnes. He now the point guard. And welcome to San Diego. Those of you watching NCAA action elsewhere, we have 12 minutes plus remaining in the second half. Dick Enberg, Bill Walton, along with Leslie Visser and the charge of the St. Joseph's Hawks. They're the ninth seed against the top seeded Stanford Cardinal. Cardinal had it their own way almost the entire game, led by as much as 14. And St. Joseph's led by Marvin O'Connor, that man who now has 22 points, has pulled within four. And that last three he made, that just made him the all time leader leading single season score in the history the 92 year history of basketball competed at St. Joe's University. Apparently, uh, Johnson's Leo's getting an elbow in the nose and uh, he'll have to come out for attention. The old three stooges defense. Guys playing well just go there pop in one. That, that football player that makes him tough. <laughs> Foul away from the ball on Woods, Eric Woods, one of the two seniors on this team. That's his first. He's from St. Louis. Backs up uh, O'Connor. And at the line is the almost perfect free throw shooting, Ryan Mendez from Burleson, Texas, is a 
father is Cuban. They, he came over to this country at age 14. And just a, out of a fairly small program in Texas where he was a huge star. And what a touch. 38.17 rebounds per game in the big leagues of Texas high school basketball. But what he has learned in terms of competitive greatness and toughness from Casey Jacobson has taken him over the top this year, establishing himself as one of the key performers in Stanford basketball history. And as with six, as Jacobson, the All-America forward, the sophomore is given a breather. Casey's been quiet here in the second half. Both Collins wins back in now. But the flow and momentum is all St. Joe's. Jameer Nelson, he is the spark plug. 58-54 Stanford. 12 for Nelson. Julius Barnes has to deliver here with Mike McDonald, regular point guard, sitting on the bench now with four fouls. At what point does Montgomery bring him back? Inside, Jason Collins wins out, and it's knocked out of bounds by Mendez. Ball to St. Joe's. Jameer Nelson, can this be a freshman? Oh, my. Stone just late reacting. Daniels cannot let Evans get in front. But after Oliver hit those two deep jump shots, all of a sudden there's a little bit more room in that paint to get the ball to Evans. As he misses the first free throw. So here comes J.P. Blevins. Bogans will take a seat. Evans was outstanding from the free throw line on Thursday, making 13 of 15, most of those late in the game. Second one good. 47 to 42. So this makes it interesting again. You've chopped seven points off that 12-point halftime lead. Kentucky has had some trouble here in the second half of play. Now Blevins. Worley really working hard against Tayshawn Prince, and he has done a nice job. Prince has 12 points, 10 at halftime. The crossover steps back from deep. Rims out Evans fighting his way and grabs the rebound his eighth. That is a big time block out. Now Henderson slicing. J.P. Blevins the other way. Tayshawn Prince spinning. Pretty. In transition, he's almost impossible to stop, and that's the danger for Iowa. If you're due as Henderson and you shoot that ball, you almost have to make it, because if you miss, that allows Kentucky to run down to the other end. Now Evans with three guys around. Inside, Evans taken away into the hands of Worley. He stripped, gets it again. Power dribble goes up under the backboard. No call. Boy, Kentucky doing a great job with their interior defense. Saul Smith leaves his feet to Daniels. Tipped up and in. Stone with a hand on it. And the lead up to nine. Fifteen twenty-one to go. Second half will play. Evans picks up the foul. Kentucky up 51-42. Not hit a three-point shot in the two games here in San Diego. 0 for 9. Phillips is not a statistical player, but he's one of those guys that has to have his game going for it to all work for St. Joe's. He plays the high post swing and the rhythm, the fluidity just not there for Bill Phillips. Joe McKinney, the two Collins, Mendez and Barnes on the floor for Stanford. Uh -huh. Another miss, Nelson. How, how many rebounds this guy has? He's leading the team in rebounds with eight. How tall is that guy? He's seven feet. feet. He's going before our eyes as O'Connor hits another three. It's a one-point game. And the big problem, look at the lineup that Stanford has. Casey Jacobson on the bench. He's not in foul trouble, is he? No. Teo Johnson's got a bloody nose, so they're trying to attend to him. And then Mike McDonald has got... Four fouls. Here oh. comes uh, Jacobson. He's checking in at the scores table as Barnes makes his move to the left. What oh, defense? What and defense by Paul Connor breaks out? Now the game is Philadelphia's pace. The public league and all these guys came out of. Nice passing. Wide open to Cesano. 
And for the first time in the game, St. Joseph's leads 59-58 at the 10-minute mark. The Hawk will never die. A 13-2 run for St. Joseph's. Beautiful pass that time by Phillips from up high. Oh, now a foul on Phillips. They're going to call him for holding Jason Collins. That'll be his fourth. That means the Susanna, Phillips, and Reed, the three big men for St. Joseph's, all saddled with four fouls. O'Connor, who just set the single season scoring record, the penetration, the dish. This was the game that they wanted. Martelli wanted guys attacking the basket. And then the beautiful dump off pass by Bill Phillips. Susanna delivering. Susanna being arrested by Coach Phil Martelli. St. Him Joseph. He just scored. Well, he gets tired. Tired? How old is this guy? At the line is Jason Collins, and he has 12 points and ties the game at 59. There it is. Uh, not good numbers for the St. Joe's big men. All three of them within a foul of disqualification. Jason Collins coolly drops in two and Stanford back in front. Down to 945 here in San Diego, the Western Region, number one seed Stanford beaten in this round each of the last two years by Gonzaga two years ago in North Carolina last year. They saw their 14-point lead. Thank you. Oh my! Marvin O'Connor throwing in threes, fires in another 27 points, and he's missed only two shots the entire game. The game is Martelli's. He's orchestrating it now. It's the street game that O'Connor and Nelson excel at. Inside, big Jason Collins with the answer for Stanford, and they reclaim the lead, 62-61. Good question for Stanford. Can Joe Bikini playing the point now? Slow down Jameer Nelson. Can Casey Jacobson playing defense? The zone. <laughs> O'Connor oh, can miss 30 points for this junior from Philadelphia. O'Connor just signaled over to the bench. He couldn't be asking to come out. And O'Connor with a foul, and he's walking immediately to the bench. Look at—he's really reaching for air. I, I don't he's care. exhausted. This guy's too hot. You don't come out at this point. Fourth foul. Fake, on fake an injury here. Tell the referee your shoes untied. You're too hot. This guy is jumping in everyone's face, right in the big guys, Collins, and then they step back. Casey Jacobson, first team All-American. You never heard of me? Face. 12 for 14 shooting, much of that from outside, and the miss by Casey Jacobson, who's an 80% free throw shooter. And here's St. Joseph's trailing almost the entire game against the top seed by as much as 14 late in the first half, and now leading by two with the ball. Stanford has not lost a road game all season. Phillips, nice pass to Reed. He scores, and Phillips with the assist and a foul. Stunning developments here in San Diego. Stanford thinking they had an easy route to Minneapolis with just having to come a one hour plane ride south to San Diego. And then next week in Anaheim, they arguably, from some people's point of view, the weakest of regionals. But no, right now it's all St. Joseph's. Damian Reed's first points, the starting center from Sol from uh, Toronto, Ontario, and he's fouled by Joe Bikini and completes a three-point play, and St. Joseph's celebrates its biggest lead of the game. And Montgomery quickly coming back with McDonald. What kind of game does McDonald have right now after sitting for so long, though? No. Where's Teo Johnson, who's been killing people? But Montgomery going with his starting lineup. Oh, nice pass, Jacobson. Inside of Jaron misses, but it's followed in by brother Jason. Three-point lead, St. Joe's. Don't get conservative. If you're ever going to pull off a huge upset like this, you got to go for everything. Well, look at that. Nelson, acrobatic, gets it back to Phillips inside to Reed. Phillips is starting to handle the ball beautifully up high now. That's a good sign for Martelli. And who else would be down in that pile but <laughs> Jameer Nelson? You know he's in there somewhere. <laughs> 7.46 left. It's St. Joseph 67, the Cardinal of Stanford 64. Good move to attack Evans. He picked up a couple of quick fouls.
Boy, Kentucky doing a nice job getting out on Boyd. Worley, short. I think Iowa needs a little bit more from Worley offensively, guys. You got to make that shot. And Evans makes that one. Rather, Blevins makes that one. J.P. Blevins, his first basket of the game, a three-pointer. Kentucky up by 11. Inside, Thompson, and one. One of the reasons that Kentucky's had some success is they've been able to identify the shooters and get out on them. Here's Boyd right here. And watch the Kentucky defense react to him. Passes the ball to the corner. Now, as soon as he catches the ball, Saul Smith's out on him, makes him get rid of it. Worley takes the ball inside but misses. The key there is to put the ball in the hands of Worley, who's not nearly as solid a shooter as Boyd. Rod Thompson adds the free throw. 56 to 47. Kentucky. Now, Iowa now looking for another one of those mini runs to get this game back a little bit more under control. Hogan on the hop. Nice look. Askell, great catch and finish. Nothing breaks down a defense like that dribble penetration. You draw the defenders, and if you've got guys who go to open spots, you can kill it. And that's exactly what Estel's been doing all night. This Kentucky defense just makes Iowa stop. Oliver from downtown rattles it home. Oliver with three threes in the second half of play with 14 points now. He cuts it to eight. Now Iowa needs a stop on defense. Here's the Prince of Kentucky in the low post. Saul Smith from straight away. Esco going up high, coming up with the board. His sixth rebound. And they call that foul against Worley. Estel really doing a heck of a job inside. Great position. Meanwhile, Kentucky finding the open man. Up by eight. Sweet 16, but all the way to the final four. As for the second straight year, Stanford eliminated in this round, the second round. And Mike Montgomery has seen a big lead. Meldon has watched the St. Joseph's Hawks move into a 67-64 lead with 7.40 left in the second half. And finally, Marvin O'Connor puts himself back in the game. Playing with four fouls, though, as is Reed in Sazanov. Nagunu now in there to help out defensively, and another foul, and this time I believe it's Nagunu. It's been 40 years since St. Joe's went to the Final Four, coached by their Hall of Fame coach, Jack Ramsey. Jameer Nelson it is who's ticketed with the foul, and for Nelson, that is his second. Here's big Jason Callums. He is, because of... Uh, Injuries, a medical year taken off, and a red shirt. He's only a sophomore, the seven footer from North Hollywood. His brother is a senior, and there's mom and dad cheering every stroke as these big uh, Collins twins are excellent free throw shooters. Uh, Jason, 78% on the year. What Montgomery's got to keep doing, though, is getting back to their basic fundamental offense of playing the three guys in the perimeter, spacing beautifully, and then a the high low combination. Martelli has got the game and the flow going his way. O'Connor didn't stay hot, but he went to the bench. Time for a heat check from O'Connor. He was really exhausted as Crenshaw takes it to the end and scores. He's fouled. Crenshaw, the one of two left-handers on this St. Joe's team. Frank Wilkins being the other. They play the same position, Crenshaw and Wilkins. Down the lane, slicing. The big man, Jason Collins, coming for a high jump block as opposed to a horizontal jump block and get it on the angle. There's Naeem Crenshaw, a senior from Philadelphia over Brook High. Averaging almost 12 a game. He's the sixth man, and he completes the three-point play. What a half for St. Joe's. They made 14 out of 19 this half, shooting over 70%. Well, we've seen great shooting out of big five schools in NCAA tournament history. Remember Villanova beating Georgetown. That 1984-85. One of those years. Collins takes it inside, and uh, it could, could be a... Uh, oh, I thought it meant it for first. I thought I saw a charge call, but it is against 
St. Joseph's, and they're going to run out of people here pretty soon. The Goon Una has three. The discipline, the poise, and the patience of Stanford, getting what they want, still trailing, but an eternity of time left. Can they make free throws? They're a great free throw shooting team. Phillips in, he has four. Nagunu out. Double bonus for Stanford. But percentages go out the window when you're playing in the NCAA tournament. When you're playing from behind. How many times have they been behind all season long? But the remarkable season, only two losses, both of them at home to Arizona and UCLA. 70 to 69, St. Joseph's. And here's O'Connor back, and he's off the mark. Never should have taken himself out. McDonald has returned at the point for Stanford. Julius Barnes can't hit. O'Connor get right the rebound. Don't walk it up here. Don't get conservative. If you're going to win against these big giants, this Levithian struggle that they're coming with today, they're going to take a timeout and talk it over. 6.24 to go, a one point game. The perplexed look on his face. How do you stop this Kentucky team? Well, I don't know that that was perplexed. That's the way Henry always looks. <laughs> he is a guy that there's always something going on behind those eyes. A thinker. Absolutely. Tapped out of bounds. Oliver swiping at it. And what a great game plan the Trojans of USC devised today to deal with Boston College. That was really a tremendous effort. They lose their point guard with seven minutes to go. Young guy that's only taken a couple of free throws all year, bangs some down from the free throw line to help him win the game. And there, Prince again, talking about banging him down, Gus. As he looks at us and cracks a smile. Teo Johnson with that bloody nose, and the blood was on his number five, so he now is wearing unmarked number 12, no name number 12. How are we going to tell him it's? How are we going to tell him it's him? Well, how are we going to tell that it's him? I'll help you out. You'll help me out? There he is. Boy, there's nobody <laughs> quite like that one in this game as a foul is called. How old is uh, Teo Johnson? Jaron Collins' third foul. Teo Johnson is 19. He's got the body of a 28-year-old man. 245 pounds, 4% body fat. <laughs> he uh, redshirted as a football quarterback at Stanford, and they feel he's got a tremendous future there. But he said, hey, I can, no reason I can't be just as good in this game as well. Phillips at the line has come alive of late. Can St. Joe's make the pressure free throws? This dual citizen of both France and the United States, his mom, Dominique, is Member of the French national team. His dad, Bill, started at St. John's and graduated in 1972 before playing eight years of professional basketball in France. He's become a media legend over there. There's Martelli's wife, Judy, and the whole family is here. Including the son, who was a walk on sitting on the bench, number 10, Phil Martelli Jr. Inside. Not there, but the other count. So Jaron misses. Jason follows. It's 72, 71, 22 points for Jason Collins. I'm concerned for St. Joe's and their passivity on the defensive backboard. Kicked. Nice step out by Jaron Collins. Marvin O'Connor working on Casey Jacobson. Takes it in and Collins. Pulls it away and out comes Stanford and alone is Jacobson and the lead belongs to Stanford. 73-72. Dribbling in to the Twin Towers as opposed to spreading the floor and driving around them. 19 now for Jacobson, the sophomore All-America for Stanford. O'Connor's cooled off. Can they find a way to get him back out again? They need to get a two-man basketball. Crenshaw takes it into the lane and he's fouled by McDonald and that'll be all for him. No, it's Julius Whoa. Barnes. Barnes gets the foul. His third. In traffic there, Marvin O'Connor struggling there. You drive right into two seven footers. What is he thinking? They just kick it right out and Casey Jacobson gives O'Connor a taste of his own medicine as he leaks out on the break. Naeem Crenshaw with eight on the game. A good free throw shooter at 78 percent. Has two. two as he's in the double bonus and a chance to reclaim the lead. That ties it at 73. When he came out, Naeem Crenshaw of Overbrook High School, a school that gave us Wilt Chamberlain, Walt Hazard, Wally Jones, Andre McCarter, legendary Wayne Hightower. He was an offensive star. He's 
a fluid scorer, can do it all, but he's really worked on getting his defensive game together to make him so valuable. His academic suspension caused him to come off the bench this year as Frank Wilkins became the starting small forward. Down to the five minute mark here at Aztec Bowl, Cox Arena in San Diego. Julius Barnes, he wanted to know McDonald. It's Michael McDonald, the point guard, senior from Long Beach. He has nine, and he is a perfect three for three from outside, shooting 50% on the season from beyond the arc. Nelson can't hit it. Rebound, Jaron. The Twin Towers making their presence felt. Two point lead, Stanford. What, what Montgomery's done here, he's put Mendez on the bench because he wants Barnes to guard Jameer Nelson so that McDonald won't pick up his fifth and final foul. Jason Collins showing that he can handle the ball inside. Back out to McDonald, his first miss from beyond the arc. Phillips making it happen at both ends of the court. And Jameer Nelson tempted to go for the three and pulled it back with 4.09 left. If Nelson, if it's Crenshaw with the ball out in front. He's the guy who's hot. O'Connor has lost the touch. This, there's Crenshaw. Down set set a screen for him. Ten on the clock. Nelson takes it in and ties it at 76. Jameer Nelson has 14. What a game. What, what talent, Jameer Nelson. Explosiveness, power, quickness, poise, competitive greatness. 14 points, oh. nine assists, and eight rebounds for Nelson. And then Collins can't hit the easy layup, and Phillips gets the rebound for St. Joseph's. And here come the Hawks with three and a half to go, and the game tied at 76. And the half, we talked about the need for Phillips and or Crenshaw to do something to support jumper. Jameer Nelson not there. Oh, the breakout by Jacobson. O'Connor has four fouls, so he has to let him go. Bad decision by the backcourt for St. Joe's. Nelson threw up the wild three and then just raced in to try to get an offensive rebound. Now he's sure he's got an almost triple double, but late in the game like this, he cannot expose your backcourt without coverage. 78-76, the top seed at Stanford Cardinal as Marvin O'Connor goes up for three. Not there, and Jameer Nelson bats it back out to O'Connor. Stolen! Julius Barnes the other way for Stanford. Fortuitous turns and bounces going Stanford's way. They're making their own breaks. Casey Jacobson is out in transition time and time again here. Where is the backcourt coverage for St. Joe's? This time, it's Julius Barnes delivering. Game summary at 80-76 Stanford back in front with two and a half to go. Team fouls, both are in the double bonus. Only one timeout left for St. Joe's. Leading scores, Jason Collins 22, Casey Jacobson 21 for Stanford, Marvin O'Connor 30, Jameer Nelson 14, the backcourt of Phil Martelli. Martelli's got his work cut out for him. His team is fatigued. They're in foul trouble in his hot hand. The best player on the squad, the conference player of the year in the A-10, Marvin O'Connor, has lost his touch. Michael McDonald playing with four fouls, who's standing up over the top of Jameer Nelson. He's the only Stanford player with four. O'Connor, Reed, Sazanoff, and Phillips all have four for St. Joseph's. Where's the offense going to come from? O'Connor? Yes, he's still around. 80-78 to score. O'Connor with 32, four under, or five under his career high. Now's when you had to pull.